Conversations at the Piano Plaza Charlotte ran her fingers across the piano and felt a shiver run down her spine. It was Tuesday and the clouds were heavy as always, rain battling the mud of the sodden melancholic ruins as Charlotte shivered, her breath visible in the cold early morning breeze. She sat down at her usual spot in the public piano park, a beacon of hope in a world of bleak forgettings, a hand-me-down theme park of joy in a junkyard world. Charlotte, said Max in a hushed, respectful tone, a short, chubby but friendly looking man with a white beard flowing down to his chubby belly who exuded a sort of brotherly charm to her. Charlotte, oh, I'm much pleased to see you, the words escaped like dust particles from his mouth. There are rumours that the Union are coming, that they might be able to finally liberate us from this godforsaken rust hole. Drive those fascist jack of bastards out once and for all, so that we may still be free as we were before. A smile, as Max took a moment, rare as it was, to feel hope in this ruin of a world. Well, we'll see, Charlotte responded in her own despondent tone. Music now her only emotional outlet, the thing that kept her battered frame from despair, her thin fingers descending to the keys. Max began to play a little Chopin on the battered old piano before him, as Charlotte began to sketch out her own composition inspired heavily by Eric Sarty. Melancholic longing filled the air as the harmonics of music and the power of art filled the old piano courtyard, the arena of hope. It was Wednesday, and Charlotte sat down at her usual spot as a gathering of other eccentrics huddled for warmth at the table down the way from her. She began to play one of her own compositions, preparing to forget the insane war that raged outside, artillery shellowing in the distance, occasionally punctuating the peace that was the sanctuary, this sanctuary of creativity. The peace of her playing occasionally interrupted by the conversations the young bums were having at the table away away. We should show them no mercy. I think the Union should just firebomb the entire jackal camp with what remains of our Air Force. One gruff looking stern man, probably in his late twenties, said of a tone of anger quivering in his voice. You fool, Roger. Do you really think war is so simple? An older voice responded back. If the Union did that, well the risk of hitting our own people is too high. The jackals are all situated in civilian areas, and the risk to them is too great. So what? Roger replied, the anger rising in his voice. Charlotte heard the tone raising, and the piece of her composition faltered the tension rising in a muse. The ordinary people trapped in this mad ruin they called their home. As she began to press down harder on the keys, major chords developing, sneaking into a previous piece as the wolf within her remote, a cacophony of dissonance ringing in her mind, the anger around her being channeled into this instrument. Please shut up, she shouted to the men in the corner. I am playing! The men scowled at her and wandered off, as a young woman probably aged about 18 years old but looking battered and weary and with tired eyes which gave her the air of a much older woman, approached and sat at the piano beside Charlotte and began to listen intently as the loudness mellowed to a melodic, solemn key. The patterns of peace emerging in the symphony Charlotte was improvising. The girl looked at her with wistful, somewhat sad eyes and took a moment to smile as the peaceful chord progressions danced and waved their magic with their small crowd that began to gather, each with a similar smile on their faces, as the bombs shattered the peace of the real far away, the light glowing in the darkness, the candle of love, music and hope flickering in the void. <laughs>